It is just a huge, huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Abdur Rafay Zafar all the way from Karachi, Pakistan. That is so damn exciting. I don't know if you guys know this, but the uh, most exciting thing I did lecturing is I got to lecture in 50 countries. Pakistan is actually the sixth most populous country in the world. China is a billion four, India a billion three, United States 326 million, Indonesia 266 million, Brazil 210, then Pakistan and even 200 million. Next would be Nigeria 195 million, then Bangladesh 166 million, then Russia at 143, then our neighbor to the south, Mexico, at 130 million. Abdur Rafay Zafar, you're the first homie I've got to podcast interviewing from Pakistan. I am so damn excited. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for calling me. Well, I called you because I'm a huge fan of your 250 posts on Dental Town. You're uh, you're a genius. You're a digital marketing consultant specializing in generating new patients for dental and medical practices through pay-per-click advertising. He is a Google AdWords certified professional since 2012 and the owner of Reach Me Faster. Dot com, which he founded in January 2014. Reach Me Faster is a boutique digital marketing agency that currently manages pay-per-click advertising campaigns for over 25 small to medium businesses worldwide, including about 15 dental practices with 20 plus locations based in US and Canada. In addition to marketing and advertising, Rafay is passionate about health and fitness and public speaking. And you like to go by Rafay. So Rafay, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for calling and a good, warm welcome to all the you viewers on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes that are joining us. Well, you're exactly on the other side of the world um, from each other because it's 9.15 a.m. here and it's 9.15 p.m. there, right? Exactly, yes. So if I just start dr digging a hole straight down, you're just 8,000 miles away from me, but I don't know if I can dig through the core of the earth. They say it's pretty hot molten molten uh, uh, iron down there. So where did you, I, I, like say, I called you, you did not call me. Um, your answers on Dental Town, where did you learn all this? How, tell us about your journey. How did you go? How did you end up working for a bunch of crazy dentists? <laughs> so basically, I got into digital marketing back in 2008. At that time, I was studying engineering at NAD University. And so I started a blog that was related to, again, from my studies. And from there, I used to get a lot of requests from professors to publicize their books, publicize, you know, their articles. And so that is how I got to an introduction to digital marketing, the fact that you can actually promote stuff online and that gets traction. So from there, I was introduced to SEO, how to create blog posts, you know, rank higher. And then eventually to pay-per-click advertising back in 2011. And from there, obviously, I completed my Google AdWords certification in 2012. And I was lucky enough that within, I believe, within the first year, I got my first client who was a dentist. And he had two offices back then. And so that's how, you know, uh, from the beginning, I was, you know, working with the dentist on his Google AdWords campaigns. And so I worked with him about for until essentially 2016 so that's about four years and from in the, within the four years he grew his practice to six offices and so the budget grew from three thousand to thirty thousand a month so that's a lot of data or you know spread over a long time and so that's basically uh, how you know i managed to get to know so much about dentistry in the united states without ever visiting there and he was the guy who introduced me to Dental Town. I didn't know about Dental Town, that there's a forum a community, community of dentists. And I asked him for a referral, you know, I've been working with you for so many years. Why don't you refer me to your friends? And so he, he basically pointed me to Dental Town. That's how I ended up on your uh, Dental Town community. How, how do you like the Dental Town community? I love it. I love it. And I think that the, you're, you've done a great job, uh, you know, having a uh, creating a community that uh, binds, you know, people from everywhere. And, you know, I, I was ex accepted, uh, which was surprising, to be honest, because I was expecting my application to be rejected being from outside the United States, you know, and the spam that comes from this part of the world, you know, on online forums. And uh, so, but yeah, you know, if you get provide value, then you get, I guess, um, the recognition. 
Well, you know why I didn't join Dental Town? You, you didn't join? I didn't join. You know why? I wouldn't, why? I wouldn't join any club that would take me as a member. <laughs> why would that be the case? Yeah, you know, that's why I can't join a country club because I figure, hell, if they take me as a member, they'd take anyone. Okay, so uh, this is Dentistry <laughs> Uncensored, so I'm going to ask you some brutally tough questions. Uh, I don't want to talk about anything everyone agrees on, so let's talk about um, the controversial stuff. So, you know, you can buy, you know, you can buy love, uh, you can pay for that, that's that's known as uh, prostitution, or you can earn love where a girl voluntarily loves you. So some people say that the best SEO is earning it by blogging every day, and then some people yeah. say that if you don't have a great website, then you gotta pay for it, pay per click, with like Google ads and Facebook ads. So what do you think is more effective? Earning your SEO by having a great website and and putting up blogs and and uh, writing uh, regular blogs about things you're passionate about or saying, man, I don't care. You can have the ugliest website in town. Just pay for it, dude. Just buy a bunch of paper clicks. So what, what, what do you think is better, earning love or paying for it? Well, the thing is, the challenge for especially new dentists is that right now where Google is, with the AI especially, you know, they're able to, with the so much data that they gather, they're able to find out actually who the best dentists, who the top dentists are in the town. So Google wants to provide a list of the best dentists, right? When somebody searches for, let's say, dentist Tampa, Florida, they want to provide the list of top 10 dentists in Tampa, Florida. That is their goal. And with technology, they're able to, you know, they're, they're fine tune their algorithm so much, then they know, know so much about the consumers, the users of that are using Google, that they're able to get that down, like pretty much all the time. So that creates a problem for somebody who's just starting out. He cannot be the best dentist in Tampa if he's just starting out. That, that's just not how it works. So he needs that experience, he needs to establish himself before Google will give him the top ranking. And that is where, you know, the problem arises. So in the past, it was a, you were able to sort of, you know, promote your website and get yourself ranked higher, even though you may not have been the best dentist or one of the top dentists in, in the area. But as time goes by, that is going to be much, much more difficult to achieve because Google, again, with all the data they have, with all the sources they have, they will be able to rank the best dentist, the actual best dentist, not the best websites, not the most optimized websites, not the most, you know, work, the website that have been invested has the best design, no, the best dentist, the actual uh, people that matter, rather than the websites. And so that is basically, you know, the dilemma that faces uh, somebody that has just started out or, you know, who's, who's still working their way up. And for them, you know, Google AdWords is is perfect choice basically because while they are building them, their patient base, while they're establishing themselves, they need they can still benefit you know from the patients that Google uh, drives every day to uh, millions of businesses around the world. It's funny you said new business because my favorite uh, one of my favorite guys is uh, Warren Buffett. I went to Creighton in Omaha, Nebraska, and that's where Warren Buffett lives. Berkshire Hathaway, yeah. greatest investor, he come lecture to a business class. And he said, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. And what he said that recessions were, um, the business cycle was very necessary because it cleans out all malinvestment. And in the last 2008 uh, correction, which was a decade ago, about 88 practices went bankrupt in the valley here in Phoenix, Arizona. And half of them were brand new startups and the other half were niche cosmetic dental offices where these were a lot of some of my friends. I mean, some of them were in my front room crying. They had lost their ability to do root canals, extractions, partials, dentures, and all they had been doing is taking out everyone's crowns and amalgams and replacing it with all porcelain and veneers. And that market completely died because um, in a recession, smart people don't part with their money. And so again, you know, right now it's been 10 years since that last recession and being 55 years old, they seem to be a very repetitive business cycle at about every 10 years. And you, um, there's a lot of really smart people like Schiller, 
um, 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 Alan Greenspan said last week that the, the stock market's in bubble territory. I mean, um, we just had the Economic World Forum in Switzerland, and all the roundtables said, you know, they see nothing but danger clouds. You know, these multiples are crazy. And you're right. Um, startups, what you're saying is a startup website isn't going to get great SEO. So if you're a star, so what happened to these startups in eighty in back in two thousand eight? They they went and rented in a retail shop. They put in a beautiful office, and they just thought all they had to do was a bunch of advertising, and everyone would come in. And it just stopped during the crash. Um, but when you talk about AI, which is artificial intelligence, how would artificial intelligence figure out who the best dentists are in Tampa or Phoenix? How, how do they, how do they do that? Yeah. So Google. So Google. A lot of people just associate Google as, let's say, a search engine, but Google also has the biggest, you know, mobile platform like Android and Android. They have Gmail, they have Maps, they have YouTube. So they can gather data. So, for example, if a dentist, he doesn't have a great SEO, you no, know, he's not ranking, like he doesn't optimize for certain keywords, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But through Gmail, Google can see that he's sending appointment confirmations to, let's say, thousand people or whatever number, you know, per per a quarter or something. Google can see that data. Similarly, people that are carrying Android phones, they're going from searching locations, searching the, the, that particular practice name on maps. Google can see that data, and through that, they're able to under better understand what do actually people want. And that is where you know the AI comes in because now there there's no human involvement. It's all, it's happening basically automatically. So the algorithm is self-learning what's like what dentist names are being searched or where people are actually going to, and that is how they're able to better understand you know which dentist is actually you know the the best in the region. So. In addition to, of course, you know, backlinks and other criteria, but that's where, you know, Google is becoming smarter and very difficult to sort of manipulate through SEO tactics, SEO techniques, very difficult to, in the future, it's going to be much, much more difficult to manipulate. Okay, so um, next um, question. What do you think is better, Facebook or Google for getting people to end up being new patients? So Because those are, those are really... Those are really the two main beasts. I mean, exactly. Google yeah. and Facebook, that's more important than probably, do you agree it's more important than Twitter and Pinterest and Snapchat? Right. What about Instagram and LinkedIn? Or, or is, it, is, right. this, is this mainly just about Facebook and Google? Or do you think any of the other ones like LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, do, do those matter or is the gorilla really just Google and Facebook? Yeah, so it's it's Google and Facebook really. Does for, anyone else uh, matter? Yeah. No, I think if you if you have those two covered, then you are basically ninety percent, ninety five percent of the way there. Uh, LinkedIn is you can forget about that, and uh, what what else? Pinterest, yeah, though you can forget about. Those. What about Twitter? I'm on your Twitter at Reach Me Faster, but I see your last tweet was uh, four eighteen fourteen. So do you want me to retweet that to my? Uh... <laughs> no, I think. That was not my account. I believe that's not my handle. That somebody else basically hijacked the handle. So it's, I, I, it's I, from I, the I, link off your website, though. When I go yeah. to reach me, when I go to your site, reachmefaster.com, and I hit Twitter, it pulls up this. Yeah, I think it's it's basically it wasn't active. Maybe I think it was registered by the person who created my website, but it's not uh, you don't like uh, it's. Not, I'm not active. I'm not active on social media. I think it's a. Uh, it's a very low ROI, uh, you know, commitment. Social media. I that's what I think. Uh, but video and YouTube, and uh, now obviously through mobile, you can create videos faster. So I think that is a much uh, higher ROI commitment. And so what that's is a why that's commitment why video meaning YouTube video on YouTube. Yeah, it's easier to create. It's much much easier, and you actually get people people's attention. You know. And it's not just, you know, people just don't scroll past by your post or infographic. With video, they can actually listen, they can see the passion, they can hear you, they can see you. And so that's that's more meaningful, basically. And 
I believe you can get your message across much better from, from video. And I think video content, even on Facebook now, it's 95, 90% of the posts are uh, video related. And, yeah, uh, I, I tell, the I content. mean, I have, there's 60 people in dentistry who put their podcasts on Dentaltown on the app. And every one of them who's put their, uh, uploaded their podcasts on Dentaltown said their subscribers to iTunes skyrocketed. They found it on Dentaltown, then they subscribed on iTunes. But I always tell them, why don't you do Skype and do a video tube so you have a video to upload on YouTube and Facebook? I mean, I've had 10 shows on Facebook uploading the video that we're on that had over 190,000 views. Why would you pass up, why would you pass up video and do sound only? I mean you're doing the podcast, you're talking to them. Exactly. Why not do the extra step and just record the video? Even though I have a face for radio, I still do video. <laughs> but uh, so so you're saying so let's go back be specific. So you're saying just concentrate on Google, which includes YouTube and right. facebook you say facebook. just spend your time there yes okay so what would you what would you do because I, I know what my i know how my homies think Here, here's what here's what everybody's saying listen to you they're saying rafe look i pay all my bills i pay my rent lab equipment overhead employees i pay everyone if i just had 10 more patients a month i've already paid all my bills that money minus lab bill would drop to the bottom line if i had 10 more new patients a month I'd probably double my net income. So if someone's listening to you and saying, if I go to reachmefast.com, Rafe, how are you going to get me 10 more patients in my office a month? Is that doable? Or is that too yes. big of a request? Yes, that's doable for most practices. Now, the reason why I say most is because it depends you know, the, on the search volume. How many people are actually searching for a dentist in that particular area, city, town? And so in most metros, like large metropolitan areas, this is definitely doable. I mean, that's definitely doable. Uh, but let's say in a rural area, perhaps, you know, it's going to be difficult. Uh, but for, I think most, you know, urban areas, urban centers, 10 patients, it's no, it's, it's no, no big deal for, from Google AdWords. Your go-to would be Google AdWords. That's where you'd focus first. First, yes. The reason is because Google AdWords allows you to show your ad to people that need dentistry like fairly soon. So, I mean, why would somebody search on Google? That's because they need that particular service. That's why they're searching. And so you have the opportunity to show your ad just to those people who need your service, whether that's implants, whether that's crowns, whether that's, you know, emergency dental services, whether that's um, your orthodontic services. So. You can show your ad to specifically based on the intent of the searcher. If people who have, let's say, a missing teeth, they might type in your dental implant cost, for example, that's a search. So perhaps you might want to advertise on that. Or they might type in a specific name like all on four, or maybe they type in a competitor, your competitor's name, clear choice. They type in clear choice, uh, impl uh, clear choice stamp up. So that gives you an opportunity. Okay, so why would somebody type in clear choice stamp up? Perhaps they are considering you know, getting implants. So, uh, or all in four. So you advertise on those keywords, you buy, you bid on those keywords and you show your ad, here it is, you know. Are you looking at dental implants? Do you have missing teeth? Or fix your missing teeth or something like that. And from there, obviously, you get them on your website and that's how the process begins. Well, th this is why um, Google is um, the monster because, you know, when I'm watching, um, you know, cable television has lost pretty much all the viewers under 50. And when I'm watching this show, all the ads are non-targeted. I mean, I'm a 55-year-old male, and, you know, they're, they're, they're these ads that have nothing to do with me all day long. But if I'm searching for dentists near exactly. me, that is 100% targeted at the exact time that I'm exactly. looking for a dentist. Whereas the ad on cable TV... I mean, it's not I mean, you know, it's 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 always uh, prescription pills. It's restless leg syndrome. It's Viagra. It's Cialis. It's you know, getting a, a motorized chair up your stairway. I mean, this has nothing to do with me. They're non-targeted, stupid ads. They're interrupting the movie. They're interrupting the news. They're annoying, and I hate them. But when I go to Google and I type um, Invisalign. 
bam, I I, want to know just that Invisalign ad, and I want to know it right now. So that's why Google is perfect. So Google be your go-to, but I'm supposed to play devil's advocate. So let me throw what you say under a bus and go with the the counter deal. They're saying, dude, come on, Rafay, everyone's on Google AdWords. I'm going to go be unique and do Bing or Yahoo because everyone's looking at Google. And so if 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 all the dentists in Tampa and Phoenix are all on Google, well, maybe 10% of the searches are on Bing and Yahoo. I'll be the only guy over there. What would you say to that? Right. So the, the problem with Bing is Bing and Yahoo is that they do not have the volumes, particularly for local searches. They do not have sufficient volume. And so if you make the effort, then you obviously need to get a return. If you pay somebody to build a campaign, then you need to get some return. And that's why, unless it's a huge city like Houston or something, Dallas, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth area, you have multiple locations. And so with so many cities, perhaps so many towns, so, such a huge population, maybe you can make it work. But for, you know, most, let's say in, uh, in, instead of Tampa, St. Pete, if you consider St. Pete, you know, I, I don't think Bing has enough volume to actually get any decent traffic. And so if there is no, nobody searching, there is nobody going to click your ad. And of course, if there's, is no one going to pick the ad and no calls and no patients. So that's why, you know, Bing is not worth the effort unless, you know, you are really are short of ideas and you just have to expand to that remaining 5, 10% of search volume. Uh, the, the point I want to drive home is the one you mentioned just earlier about the intent and why, how the ads are actually relevant to what you're searching for. So just as you mentioned, in the line. So when somebody is searching for Invisalign, they actually want to see the best ad. They want to see the best offers, like best prices, discounts, or deals. And so the ad, therefore, becomes useful. And so that is why, you know, the Google AdWords search advertising ecosystem is sustainable. Unlike, for example, banner advertising or just like you mentioned, you know, uh, TV ads, where the, the response rates is going to always decline because people will develop blindness, people will develop ad blindness, and they would not respond as well as they did perhaps 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, But on the other hand, Google advertising is always going to get better because people like us are always trying to optimize the ad to make it more relevant to the user, to make it more attractive, and to generate more clicks, more calls, more patience for our clients. So what if someone listening to you, I mean, you said that, you know, it depends on the volume of ads and in, in Phoenix or Tampa, there wouldn't be enough volume for uh, Google, I mean, for Bing or okay. Yahoo. And you're saying there's more searches in urban with, and then rural. I mean, half of America lives in 147 metros and the other half live in 19,008 rural towns. Yeah. Um, what if someone wants to see if you can help them? I mean, do you, uh, f- first of all, what's a cons- how do they contact you and how much does the consultation cost to see if they're in an area where it might work? Right. So there's no, it's a, the consultation is free and they can email me or they can fill out the form on the website. I have another website specifically for dentists that is dentalmarketingdirect.com, which is basically a blog and then. I expanded it to add some services as well. Okay, so you have reach me faster, but reach me faster, yeah. but you'd rather if they're in dentistry, which all my homies are, exactly. go to dental marketing, dental marketing direct.com. Dental marketing right. direct. Oh, I, that's right there. Free consultation. It says free consultation unless you're short, fat, and bald. Why do you, why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I never said that. It's always free for you, um, Dr. Fran. Please call me hard. Locations we serve. San Jose, Dallas, San Diego, San Antonio, Phoenix, Philadelphia, Houston, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City. That's the top 20 cities. It's what? That's the top 20 cities of the U.S. But do you do any city? What if they're from Parsons, Kansas? No, we do not do it. That's what I'm saying. You know, so first you call or call us or fill out the form, and then we evaluate using the keyword planner whether it makes sense for you to advertise on Google or not. And if it doesn't, then, you know, we tell you straightforward, you know, it's going to be tough or we do not recommend. Sometimes, you know, people are already ranking high. So maybe they're already ranking high on maps and they also have a website ranking high on the first page of Google. Then again, you know, we try to explain them that Google AdWords perhaps is not the best option since they're already ranking high on maps. They're already ranking high on the website listings. Then 
perhaps they're already getting a big chunk of that uh, Google search uh, patients from Google search. So perhaps they should try other avenues instead of you know having another third listing uh, to advertise on Google. Uh, so it depends on those factors, and based on that, we actually you know give the advice whether they should go ahead with the Google AdWords campaign or you know they should look elsewhere. Now, when you take on a client, okay, so the consultation is free, and you said um, there's a form at dentalmarketingdirect.com which they can just fill out, but you also said you have an email. What's your email? Yeah, so email is support at reachmefaster.com. Okay, support at reachmefaster.com. And um, so they should really just go to Dental Marketing Direct and then fill out first name, last name, name of practice, city, state, email, right. phone. How did you find out about this? Say some the, say from this very handsome guy on Dentistry Uncensored. And then you say, I would like a free marketing consultation, a free website audit, a free SEO analysis. So when you, right. when you, so when you do a free website audit, and a free SEO analysis. What are you? What are you looking for? Like, and I wish you'd do this for me. That would be fun and post on Dental Town. I wish you would go to my website. Um, I'm in Phoenix, and okay. I my website's todaysdental.com. But what are you looking for? So my homie calls you up and says, "My name's Howard Ferran. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. My website's www.todaysdental.com. What would you be looking for?" Right. Okay. So. We no longer do web design and we no longer do SEO. So SEO, the reason I already explained at the beginning, I don't, I don't think there's a future for SEO. Uh, SEOs will probably merge into public relations, essentially, in the coming future. Uh, okay, as far explain, as websites, explain that though, explain that though. Yes, yeah, so the reason basically is that, you know, backlinks and things like that, the technical part of SEO is becoming irrelevant. Slowly but surely, SEO knows that, everyone knows that, and I obviously knew that but like I realized that a couple of years ago, uh, so that's why you know I stopped taking on SEO they, clients. They like thought they were going to outsmart Google, and the SEO guys aren't going to outsmart Google. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, yes, that's that's right. That's what the thing with SEO is that you are actually trying to outsmart the algorithm. That's what you're trying to do. Otherwise, if the dentist is the best in town, he would rank over time. He would rank naturally on number one or on the first page. The work of the SEO is to get, let's say, the number 100 dentist, who is probably not in the top 10 or doesn't deserve to be in the top 10, sorry for that, to optimize his website such that he appears in the top 10. That is what SEO is. But the thing is, as you can see, it does not uh, align with Google's goal. Google's goal is to get the top, best, top, best 10 dentist in any specific area, zip code, or whatever the location search is. That's what they want to show to the consumer and the SEO wants to show you know something else basically they want to optimize the website such that it fools the algorithm into believing that uh, you know this dentist is the best in town I, I, I agree I couldn't agree any, anymore so so um, on this free consultation you will analyze if what you do Google AdWords based on so so if I so I just fill out the form for you so you're gonna go and look at Phoenix and see where, what exactly. they're searching for in Phoenix, so you can find the search terms? Exactly, and you can find the cost, what other advertisers are paying, and you can find the volume, like how many searches are being made. And you can also get an indication of the competition. So for example, let's say if you were advertising in, I don't know, very competitive market where the cost per click is, I don't know, 15, 20 per click, then I would suggest that you, you know, Either you have ten thousand dollars a month to invest in it, or otherwise you should, you know, think of something else, uh, because obviously a twenty dollars per click is going to be tough to generate enough clicks to generate enough calls that result in enough patients to actually you know, generate enough production that pays for the advertising, for the management fee, and you know leaves you some profit. Nice. And what is um. So give us some averages, because because they're they're going to be thinking averages. So let's say you were in the 147 metros where half of American lives. Right, right. Just, just name, give give some examples of like what clients are doing. Like like I know you got Dennis in Tampa, right? Right. So so like what what are average budgets? What what are people uh, paying and all that stuff? So mostly people pay, you know. The budgets that we work with, actually, the range is quite high, but mostly, you know, around two to three thousand. You know, that's a good number. Two to three thousand uh, a month. 
Yes. And how That's much exactly. of that is your fee versus um, so that is an cash fee. for that is Google fee. AdWords? Yeah, so our fee basically starts at $250 a month. That is for a budget that is up till $2,500 a month. So, okay? you, so your fee is $250 a month to manage up to $2,500 a month in Google AdWords? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And so in that in that price, what we're providing is the campaign, campaign management. We're providing the we're creating the landing pages. We are also providing call tracking. So essentially what we give you is a uh, patient. So we give you the actual calls that resulted from the campaign and uh, from those calls, how many of those converted into a appointment. Okay. And um, and for let's say the twenty largest cities in America. I pay you two. I pay you two hundred and fifty dollars a month for your fee. Then I give you twenty five hundred dollars a month for Google AdWords. So I send you three thousand dollars a month. And this is over PayPal, right? No, this is basically through our payment processor. It is basically to checkout. It's a Columbus, Ohio based uh, company. To checkout dot com. That is our payment processor. But if I gave you, but, you can but I give, if I give you two fifty a month, plus twenty five hundred a month to buy Google AdWords. No, no, twenty five hundred you pay directly to Google because that is right, right, goes, right. That goes, yeah. But but how many new patients on average do you think that would be? On average, right. So that's a good question. Now, in some areas we're averaging under 100, in some areas we're averaging as high as 200. 200 new patients so, a month? No, not the cost per new patient. The number of patients volume depends on how much you want to spend. So Okay, but you're, you're, average, saying, you're saying it costs 100 to $200 per new patient? Per new patient, yes. Okay. So then it just comes down to what your new patient value is. I mean, exactly. if you're a dental office where the average new patient does $300 worth of dentistry, you know, it's a PA, a bi wing and extraction, then this might not be a good deal. But if your average new patient knee is a toothache and three fourths of them get a $2,000 root canal buildup and crown, then this is a cash cow. Absolutely is. So what we have observed is that it's a mixture. So let's say you get 10 patients per month from the campaign and you spend around, let's say $1,200 a month. You get 10 patients. Out of those 10 patients, most will be like, you know, an extraction and things like that, emergency related. But a couple of them will be good cases. Like you said, root canal and uh, a crown perhaps, maybe a denture. And so when you put together on average, what we have observed is that the ROI comes around to four to five dollars for every one dollar spent on AdWords. You make four to five dollars at least on average as a general dentist. However, if you're doing some specific procedure like all on four, like dental implants, then this ROI can be eight to ten dollars for every dollar spent on AdWords. Okay, but um, I, um, I believe that a lot of dentists uh, pay a lot of money for Google AdWords just so that a person goes to their website and their website doesn't convert them. They just look at it, bounce right. off and go to the next one. What can they do? I mean, I mean, cause there, there are some people where Google will deliver 10 people to open up your website and nobody converted, nobody called, nobody made an appointment. And then the dentist cross street, if 10 people land on their website, you know, one in four might call the office. How do you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. So, so that's why we, right. So that's why we provide the landing pages because we have over time been able to work out, let's say, for example, for a dental implant, what kind of uh, information, what kind of images, what kind of copy you need to get the best result, you know, best conversion rate. And so I have some tips regarding that conversion so rate optimization. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. so you're saying you don't, you're, you're smarter than having these Google AdWords lad on dentists lame website you're you're having your google adwords land on your landing page because your landing yeah. page has a higher conversion rate absolutely yeah. that is genius that's what i've seen you talk about on dental town with your 250 posts so my homies are dentists they do root canals and crowns they don't know the difference between a website and a landing page what what is a landing page right so the landing page is essentially a page that the person sees when they click after they click the ad and it is built to convert. It is not built to rank higher. It is not built to provide overwhelming information. What really happens is that 
people forget that or dentists forget that at the end of the day if they don't make a call well then that's the, the cost since you paid the cost per click you know you you've wasted that money if they if they do not convert and so what you need to really do is design the page in such a way that you give the maximum chance to every click to convert in a call or a form submission if you have a form on the page uh, and so to do that you need certain elements so for example over here i have prepared a list images image selection so for example if you're doing let's say uh, implants or you know all on four perhaps you might want to use image of 35 45 to 50 60 year olds instead of you know some family related image copy copy should be geared towards you know what the patient or prospective patient wants so they want to replace missing teeth they want to be able to chew they want to be able to eat they want to be able to smile again so that kind of thing so the copy has to be there and then of course the reviews the testimonials the before and after the proof that you can deliver the thing and uh, and one thing I noticed in a lot of websites is the about section. About section has to be, you know, really in depth. It has to tell your story. It has to tell, you know, that you are the guy that can de that deliver them that all on for, you know, the, the beautiful teeth, the sparkling teeth. And um, that goes missing on a lot, a lot of websites that analyze about us page is, uh, it, it is not done properly. So how many, about, so, so first you see, what are these dentists, what, what are the people searching for on Google? Right. And then you see how much money are other people already paying for these search terms. Exactly. And then you build landing pages for those search terms. Uh, not search terms, but definitely topics. So, for example, procedures. So, treatment, dental implants, that is, a, that is a separate procedure, so separate page for that. And similarly, let's say Invisalign would have a separate page and other specific procedures would have a separate page. What advice, what tips would you give to young dentists? And the reason I ask that is because um, people who listen to podcasts are generally millennials. Uh, hardly right. any 55-year-old senile dentist with uh, two grandchildren walking and two grandchildren in the oven right now um, are listening to podcasts. So what would you tell the young kids? There are a number of things actually. I prepared a list of five. The one thing I learned recently, after you know having uh, experienced you know a lot of different cities running campaigns on, is that you want to move to or you want to open up a practice in a location that has middle income group. You do not want a low income group. You do not want a high income group. The a lot of times I see that. Uh, dentists prefer you know to locate their practice in high income the problem with that i have observed is that people who have a high disposable income do not have many dental problems they have good dental hygiene and so they do not need much dental work so what you're looking for is a 40 to 80 or 75 you know that middle income group that is where they have the money but they also have problems and so that is where you have a better chance of uh what growing is, what your practice is that income level? well i mean it's, it depends on the, uh, you know, the, in the course it can vary, but I think it's around 40 to 70, 80. And is 40 to $80,000, is that uh, the household income or the, the, the individual? Median, median, it's a median household income. Median household income, median. Median, median, yes. Yeah, and, the, and you guys remember the difference in medium and average is, an average is there are 10 people in the room and one was unemployed right. and one was Bill Gates. Or now the richest guy in the world is uh, the guy who owns Amazon, Jeff Bezos, 105 billion, and then the eight in the middle all made 50,000 a year. The average income would show shit. It'd be like 400,000 a year. So you want to throw out the extraneous ends and the outliers, and the median exactly. is like the mode. I do not like the mean, which is the average. I like median and mode. And so you're saying right. that rich people have great teeth and poor people don't Most have people. any money and the sweet spot is in the middle between 40 exactly. to 80,000 median household income because they've got more dental work that needs to be done and they got the means to get her done exactly plus sometimes what we observe uh, from listening to calls what happens is that let's say somebody gets a promotion and they get suddenly a great insurance now they need now they get all the dental work done that they were delaying for the past five ten years so suddenly you have this patient who has a lot of problems and he's got insurance to pay for it and you know you don't get that in high income i mean 
you don't you won't get that high income mom right so so that is one the second thing is phone training and that includes answering all the calls you generate so what we observe is a lot of them just miss calls and the you know that that results in wasted a lot of wasted so you answer all the calls plus you have to be more energetic you have to be more enthusiastic when you know you know the receptionist when you hire them you got to pay them good money and you hire the best because that is where you know a, we see a lot of difference so some offices are able to convert one in three one in four calls other offices take you know seven eight calls to convert one patient now of course there are other factors but you know on average over volume you can observe a difference in the way people answer the phone and whether they're enthusiastic whether they're energetic and you know they can close better so phone training is definitely something to look out for and then the third thing for a new uh, a dentist is to start thinking like a patient you know that's very important so as a dentist you will be doing a lot of marketing would be studying a lot of campaigns like not studying but you know reviewing a lot of campaigns websites you have to think like a patient not like a dentist so as a dentist you might want certain things but as a, the patient may not agree with so for example you may want to allocate your time uh, such that you you're spending you know, most of your you're not in office let's say you want to have three day you want to spend three days in the office but the patient you know patients may want to have saturday appointments they might want to have early morning appointments they might want to have evening appointments so when you're starting out it's better to you know sacrifice that you know and uh, basically think like a patient think about what value can add in terms of uh, benefiting the patient and that would help you uh, grow your practice and uh, the fourth thing is trust building elements that is uh, a number of uh, ways you can do that you can um, you get get third party registrations and show those uh, logos that are at trust uh, plus of course reviews reviews definitely you know you need to build up reviews and then display them use it use those reviews in your marketing material and i mean just for a comparison if you i've seen some listings where you search let's say for example dentist dallas or i don't remember the exact um, uh, listing the search 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 results page but if if you search that there is a dentist that has 1000 reviews and I'm, and the other competitors have hardly you know 50 60 so if somebody searches that they are going to hit that you know listing with 1000 plus star, uh, star reviews i think it was 4.6 4.7 rating average because the other they just they don't have the chance because the over time is built the reviews to such a high number that it becomes very difficult for others to compete so you got to build reviews from day one and that would help you you know two three years down the road uh, and then the fifth is when you're hiring a market company you must ask this question and this question gets asked in a lot of interviews and that is why should we hire you i mean i have never been asked this question but i think you, every dentist should hire this uh, should ask this question before hiring any company but not just uh, for marketing i wanted to uh, include this and that is because you want to know the secret sauce does the company have they have they developed some you know unique selling proposition what is different about them so for example for an seo company if you hire an seo company you might ask why should we hire you and not a b c d e f g well they might tell you a good reason could be we have links to local press and we can get you links from you know these websites xyz websites that others do not have access to now that is a definitely something worthwhile that others cannot offer you so similarly for if you are hiring a paper click marketing company then their answer might be that we have a huge list of negative keywords that we have developed over the years we have a huge list of ad copies that we have tested over the years we have huge list of um, landing pages that we have tested over the years now that is again you know intellectual property that 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 would benefit you and you don't have to waste that money that you know others might have to waste if they hire you know a, a general company or company that does not have that uh, built up that uh, experience and that portfolio so th- those were the five uh, you know tips for new dentists okay so then, starting- so then review them in just one line so what was number 1 succinctly middle in target middle income target middle income what was number 2 right. then phone training phone training extremely important and what was number 3 think like a patient yeah think like a patient yeah actually that should be number 1 but okay number 3 think like a patient yes and 4 was trust building get reviews yes and 5 was review, 
And five was ask your marketing you manager pay? why should I hire you? I want to I want to yeah. I want to tell you I want to ask you questions about things that annoy me, and I'm a small sample size, so just because they annoy me doesn't mean they annoy the consumer. But when I click a link, if it doesn't open in like one, two, three, four, I say screw it. <laughs> Is that does that mean I'm just hyper or how 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 fast does your website have to load before the average human just says forget it? Right. Does a so slow loading website affect your dental practice website? Yes, yes, it does affect the performance. It does affect the conversion rate, and definitely something that you need to look out for. However, it is not as bad as you know people like to portray it. In. So I think it's it's it is a problem, but. For the most part, the websites I see, uh, they load pretty fast, and uh, it's only a few of them which have over, which are overlaid or loaded with graphics and sliders and moving parts. There's that. Then obviously you're going to have problems. So much JavaScript is uh, in the development, um, like on the back end, that takes time to load. But uh, otherwise, if you go with, let's say, for example, these one of these uh, Squarespace or any of these um, third-party uh, website uh, builders, they are pretty fast and pretty, you know, um, yeah, the, the, there's the, hardly any lag time and uh, they give a very good uptime and guaranteed uptime. So, uh, you know, though, though, there are many options available and this is one of them and this is uh, not very expensive either. I, I want to rant on your, your top five list. I want to throw in my opinion, my two cents is when you say target mental income, it's like you go to these dental in, uh, um, conventions and they always want to talk on all on four, which is 25,000 arch. And America, um, Clear Choice, uh, did seven, uh, 17,000 arches last year in a country of America with 323 million people. The money is all on none. There's $10 in dentures for everyone and all on all on four. There's more money in McDonald's than the nicest steakhouse in town. Uh, number two, phone training. There's a company that got completely uh, built just on phone training. Um, what's the uh, one in Atlanta? Um, Jay Geyer's Scheduling Institute. God, I had Jay Geyer's come into my office and he doubled my conversion rate for my staff and started taping their phone calls and all that stuff and training them. Um, and a shout out to Tom Mattern, who is my buddy across the street, a dentist. And um, he told me, he, he was he was telling me to do that for four or five years, and I wouldn't listen. I'm oh. thinking, hell, my girl's been up there 20 years. She knows how to answer the damn phone, but, man, they made her answer twice good. Um, think like a patient. That's awesome. Uh, trust building. Uh, that's awesome. But when you talk about hiring a marketing manager and you're talking about what do you know, what is your unique selling proposition? Well, I want you to go to the other end. What are what are the top SEO scams? What, what do you think my homies – are getting scammed on because you get emails for this all the time. Do you see scams in this industry? Right. Yes. Uh, I think it's it's a little bit uh, shady uh, SEO especially, but I think there is a reputation involved. Yes, definitely there is scams going on. But that's why this question is built in. You know, you got to investigate how they are going to get you rank or how they're going to get you new patients. And that is what you. So, for example, if they give you a list, we are going to do this, 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 this. Let's say get the, the to tell you we'll give you hundred links for example backlinks. So you got to ask, okay, how are you going to attract those links? Just explain to me what the process is going to be. You have to be very specific because you know they they can list anything, but uh, you know you have to understand what they actually mean or what they actually do rather than what they actually uh, pretend to do. So that's the that's the most important thing uh, I think, and that's why this question, you know really should differentiate between you know a data entry company and an SEO company. I mean SEO company that has developed some systems, some some um, you know some uh, intellectual property perhaps they have tested their own technique which nobody else knows you know that that's possible that they know of a technique that nobody else knows now that is that would be some some company uh, where they know of a tactic a loophole in the algorithm that nobody else knows. Uh, when you talked about um, on your number four is number one target mental income, two phone training, three think like a patient, four trust building reviews. I want to tell my homies, listen to you. You want to see reviews on this guy? Go to dentaltown.com and read his 250 posts. I mean, you you got raving fans on Dentaltown. Yes, yes. You know you do. I have to. So that does I does have. this means you're uh, you're working hard? Are you working hard or just getting lucky? 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm board. <laughs> I want to ask something else. What percent of dentists do you think even do um, call tracking? How, what percent of dentists in America um, are sophisticated enough to even do call tracking? What what percent would you say? I think under ten percent, definitely. Under what? Under ten percent. You know, it's funny. Um, yesterday, I had a doctor's appointment, and this is under uh, too much information. I shouldn't say what it was, uh, but uh, I'm 55. So um, I had to go in for a colonoscopy. And I swear to God, I mean, you couldn't find that office. The, the website didn't, I'm, I'm, I'm driving there, his own damn website didn't have the, uh, the push the number to call. So what do I gotta do? I gotta right. take a screenshot, <laughs> memorize it. Um, when I got this off, I mean, there was no sign. I, I mean, I mean, dentists and uh, it's funny because physicians are the worst business people on earth and dentists always beat themselves up um and some of them are weird they actually beat themselves up with beats i find that very weird when they start taking beats and beating themselves but i mean dentists and vets and chiropractors are 10 times more business savvy than the mds i mean the M and when i went in there i said to the lady at the front desk i said do you get a lot of people who just like Never find you. Yeah, you know they get lost. I mean, I know it's it's hard to find. I mean, I mean that that's it. I mean, why don't you just go get a can of spray paint and write, "Hey, proctologist, we're over here." I mean, uh, I mean, I had to park in a parking lot, walk through a construction zone, then and then the elevator was in the parking garage, and I had to go to the sixth floor. I mean, it was just crazy. So I just want to tell my homies that I'm very proud of dentists. Another thing is. When I walk into the doctor's office, only the physicians still have a glass wall that they have to slide open because I'm annoying them. Then they hand me a chart to fill out. I mean, the dentists have at least got rid of the glass wall and the receptionist will greet you by name. And I mean, so, so Dennis, if you're beating yourself up with red beets, um, you're crushing it. Why, why do you think dentists and vets and chiropractors are 10 times better than MDs. I mean, do you have any MD clients? No, not yet, not yet. Yeah, because they're, uh, uh, they're not even smart enough to know that what this is uh, and that they need it, unless they do cosmetic surgeries. The only MDs right. who pull their head out of their butt are doing facelifts, tummy tucks, mm -hmm. eye lifts, boob jobs, but the guy doing <laughs> colonoscopies are, are pediatricians. They're, they're clueless. They're at least 10 years right. behind dentists. Yeah, they are, but I think they, they, I mean, they get so many patients either way, so it's not a need for them, I guess, to, you know, push hard, uh, like, for example, a dentist. Okay, now I'm going to ask, I can't, um, now <laughs> I'm going to ask you the most controversial question in dental marketing. I know my homies. I've been a dentist for 30 years. I've lectured a thousand times in 50 countries. My God, they hate talking money. They hate taking talking price. They hate discounts. They don't want They think the dentist who's offering a cleaning exam and x-ray for $99 is a dirt bag. He's desperate. I mean, they hate it. But does it work? Uh, for Google, you don't need discounts. For none of our clients out of the 15, none of them use, we do not advertise discounts on any of them. Not on the landing page, not on the ads, nowhere basically. Only if a patient, you know, says they do not have an insurance or you know how much does it cost then that discount talk comes into it but we do not actually advertise discounts our strategy basically is to rely on patients that need something done now whether that's emergency whether their tooth was chipped or they have a toothache or you know crown fell off or maybe they've just got a new insurance or maybe they've just moved into the new place and they're looking for a dentist so either way on google you will find patients automatically by nature of uh, the beast is people will search when they need something and so by speaking to that need you avoid that you know discount uh, category entirely and you get patients that get dental work done without having to be lured into it by you know offering some discount or you know offer well you ought to talk about that on all your ads because that's what dentists want to hear but you know what that's the difference it sounds like you really love google because you're targeting an exact customer at the exact time they're interested in this. Right. Whereas a lot of dentists think the best thing to do is, you know, every couple of days boost one of their Facebook posts. 
but they're boosted. But what you're saying is they're boosting it to a lot of people who don't have a broken tooth or a toothache are wanting to find a dentist at that minute. So they're seeing you, maybe you're branding yourself, but you're right. not targeting that person who exactly. lives near your office at the exact time they're looking for a dentist. So is that why you're not talking about Facebook? Right, now for Facebook, Facebook is an entirely different category. On Facebook, I think general dentists will struggle without discount. You really need to offer something like crazy to get people to visit you on Facebook because the nature of Facebook is entirely different. People are there, I don't know, to, to have a good time, to waste time. They're not there to basically look for a dentist or the, in fact, they are there probably to go, to think about, to not think about their toothache, in fact. So uh, they're there to have fun. And so I guess the best way to do, to advertise on Facebook is through the use of content. So you create content, then you create retargeting lists. So for example, let's say you create a blog post uh, uh, related to Invisalign, for example, and you target, you know, uh, mom's age, uh, you know, whatever demographic that is and income. And then you get them, you show them the, uh, the article and then you retarget them with an offer. That could work. Again, that is worth testing. Similarly, you could get them on a list, perhaps, you know, let's say, for example, uh, 10 mistakes when buying Invisalign or when um, getting uh, braces, common mistakes, download this. So you get people you get people to consume your content, to trust you, and then you follow up, you know, with a funnel or with a process, with an email sequence, and that will help you get uh, patients. But for general dentists, it's going to be tough. But for procedure specific stuff like Invisalign, like all on four, because you know exactly, you know, what you want, it is easier to then create uh, demographics, create uh, audiences rather, audiences that uh, relate to your message. Whereas for general dentists, I think it's it's, it's tough really, apart from uh, free consultation discount, it, it, you'd have to give away a lot to get new patients to Facebook as a general dentist. I can't believe we already talked for an hour. That was the fastest no. hour of my life. And I'm, I'm keeping you up past your bedtime. It's already 10.15. No, we, nobody sleeps at 10, 15 over here in Karachi. We sleep at, you know, 11, 12, or even past midnight. That must be, I Karachi cannot believe sleeps. you live in a town of 21 million. That's, uh, that's bigger than New York City. Phoenix, the whole metro of Phoenix is 3.8 million. I bet, and you're on the Indian Ocean. That's the big commerce capital. I bet that's a rocking hot town. Do you love it? <laughs> yes, it is. Karachi is the place to be in Pakistan. Well, I hope someday I get a visit there. You ever put together uh, a group of dentists? Well, to tell us what's dentistry like. Uh, they, they, they love the History Channel. They love, what, what's that big cooking show where that guy goes all around the world on CNN? Right. And one of the big, most famous shows in America is Anthony Bourdain. He's a chef who goes around the world eating at fancy restaurants around the world. I love that show because you get to see all these countries. They, the the only the most main reason I'm so glad I started dental lecturing is because when I gave my first lecture, I had no idea that someday that I would have seen 50 countries. And I hope to hell I lecture in Karachi. And I, I want to go to Pakistan and lecture in Karachi and Istanbul. But tell us what dentistry is like there. Is it, uh, what's dentistry like in Pakistan? Yes, dentistry over here is a lot different. I think it's more like very few people do preventive care so they do not get regular cleanings and there is no culture of that you know getting regular cleanings regular preventive care it's mostly when you get a toothache that's when you get to visit a dentist so and uh, again you know appointments dentists you don't really make an appointment i mean unless it's something you know like braces or something where you have to actually uh, make an appointment but otherwise most people just walk in and see you know, get to get to see the dentist uh, unless it's some big hospital you know and a very popular dentist but most of the time, you know, you can fairly much, uh, pretty much walk in and uh, get some treatment or at least um, get a prescription. Uh, so, dentist is 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 not as uh, well developed over here. So, how is the economy growing? How how would you say your the uh, Pakistan economy is? Is it growing? Yeah, is it flat? Is it contracting? No. It's growing. It's growing pretty fast. It's, in fact, it's, I believe it's in the top 10 fastest growing economies in the world. It's, we are a developing economy, so obviously a small base, so you can grow faster. 
Uh, but terrorism has gone down, so eliminated. Thank God that is that problem has been solved. But the main crisis that is stopping from explosive growth is the energy crisis, uh, power shortages and energy shortages. That is the main problem. If, if we if we can fix that, then uh, there is like we could hit eight to ten percent growth, easy. Tell tell me this about your culture. Um, for some reason, almost all dental and medical instruments all really start in Pakistan. And half, exactly. half the time, any physician or surgeon or dentist is buying forceps, 150s, 151s. I mean, how did Pakistan become the world leader in medical instruments? Why is that? Right. So there's an industry or uh, they're up north. In fact, not north, but yeah, it's not. It's in Punjab, Punjab province, Sialkot. That is the center where you know a lot of these uh, medical instruments are made and um, uh, of high quality as well. But in Sialkot is also famous for sports uh, sports goods. So, for example, FIFA is going to be having a World Cup soon, and uh, Sialkot is going to be providing uh, the footballs again this year, uh, next year. To, yeah, this year, 2018. Pakistan is at 200 million. Brazil's at 210. Do you think you'll ever overtake Brazil? And uh, are, are your women making more babies than Brazilians? Or do you think you'll pass Brazil? Or do you think? Nigeria, who's underneath you at 195, they're only five million less than Pakistan. So where's that race going to be in five years? No, I think I think Pakistan has already passed that number. I think the latest census number, as I said, the census number has not been officially released, but unofficially in the news sources we have read that it is around 230, 240 million, uh, the uh, the population of the country in the latest census. They, uh, it, is, it hasn't been released officially, so I guess that's why the Wikipedia page hasn't been updated. But uh, that's what the numbers that are going around, unofficial numbers that are going around the news stories, and so that's around 20 to 23. You know, uh, sorry, you know, 220 to 30. You know, really, um, it's kind of interesting. When you look at the 20 um, richest European countries, um, you need 2.3 babies to maintain the population. And, right. and their girls are way into that. Japan's the lowest. They're at 0.9. So every, how many people did we, we Google? How many people do Japan? Japan's island shrinks by how many people every single day? You know, starting six years ago, Japan sells more diapers for the elderly than for babies. Yeah, Japan, Japan's population has lost a million in the last five years. And if you take the 20 richest countries in Europe, if you backed out immigration, their populations are yeah. shrinking. And the uh, United yeah. States is a... Um, uh, so it all comes down to, do your girls have babies? In the United States, we're very lucky because we have 50 million Hispanics, and they have twice as many babies um, as, um, the, um, as other groups. So it all depends. If, you're, if the women uh, are having babies, your economy is growing. But, uh, so final, final um, question. Tell everybody something they don't know about dentistry in Pakistan. That we have women dentists. That we have what? We have a lot of, we have a lot of female dentists. What percent of your dentists are female? I would say from the graduating class about 50%. And how, fact, many, how many dentists are there in Pakistan? Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, uh, this is an interesting fact actually. Uh, in, it's not just limited dentistry. A lot of the graduating class of medical schools, most of them, majority is females. You know that that's an interesting, right? And the reason for that is perhaps uh, the, the, the it's a social reason. The reason is that the uh, the men want a bride that is a doctor. So that's why a lot of the women go to medical school to become a doctor to be, to get a um, you know good husband. You know what I'm? You know what my next bride is? You know what I'm waiting for? <laughs> I'm only gonna get married again when artificial intelligence has made robots. Perfect. Now my my next wife is going to be a droid. I'm not marrying a Homo sapien again. I'm waiting for the updated droid version, where uh, she's uh, you know. So when Obi Wan Kenobi's uh, ready, I'll get married. But hey, Rafe, seriously, a long uh, seriously, big fan of your 250 posts on Dental Town. Thank you so much for sharing so much time on Dental Town, answering so many questions. Uh, I'm your biggest fan. You have so many fans on Dental Town. Um, it was also an honor to have my first guest from Pakistan. And okay. dude, I would um, I would uh, do anything to listen to the lecture in um, Islamabad and um, Karachi. Uh, that's I certainly don't want to end my lecturing career without seeing 
the sixth most populous country in the world. Uh, but uh, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was an honor to interview you today. Thank you, Dr. Fran. Thank you for the opportunity. And of course, I would like to thank you for creating such a good community in Dental Town and obviously other communities that have related to the uh, dentist. And uh, it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. And one last thing. Um, I don't know if you know this, but did you know that I took Dental Town took five years, five programmers, 20 years to make. It's a half million lines of code. So you know what we did last year? We took yeah. the entire website and made it so we can cut and paste and host it for you. So if you ever want to start, what 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 are the what is the most common language that dentists like to talk in um, Pakistan? Urdu. Pakistan, her, Urdu. Urdu. Urdu yeah. So if you think there's a market for all those dentists in Pakistan, you can actually take Dental Town, and we host it. We cut and paste it and host it, and then it's all yours, baby. You have a half a million lines of code. I mean, I mean, you would not believe how many features are on Dental Town. So if that's something you ever want to do, shoot me an email, and then you can have um, Urdu Dental Town or Dental Town Islamabad or whatever, whatever you want to name it. But I do think it would be cool. Um, but I, 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 so it was so much work that uh, that you yeah. know, and and um, I wanted to share it with you know Indonesians and Chinese and Russians and Pakistan and so uh, if that ever interests you. Uh, hook, we'll hook you up. Okay, sure, sure. If, if something comes up, I'll definitely. All right, have a rocking hot day, buddy.